In this video lecture, I am going to talk about rational inequalities. A rational inequality is an inequality that contains a rational expression. These are examples of rational inequalities. Here are the steps to solve rational inequalities. First step is to set one side of the inequality to zero. For example, we have x minus 1 all over x squared minus 4 less than 0. There is nothing to do in this case because one side is already equal to 0. The second step is to factor the numerator and denominator. The numerator can no longer be factored. That's still x minus 1. However, x squared minus 4 can be factored as difference of two squares. x minus 2 times x plus 2. The next step is to make a table of values. I now have my number line for each of my factors, x minus 1, x minus 2, x plus 2, and this number line is for the rational expression, x minus 1 all over x minus 2 times x plus 2. Before we proceed, let us get the zeros of the factors. We will have zeros at 1 x minus 2 will be 0 at 2, and x plus 2 is 0 at negative 2. There. So I will put my negative 2 here. That's for x plus 2. x minus 1 is 0 at x equals 1, and x minus 2 is 0 at x equals 2. I will put points here. And I will now divide the number line through these points. Just like what we did with quadratic inequalities, remember that you have a change of sign at the zeros. For the number line x minus 1, everything on the right of 1 is positive. Everything on the left is negative. Next, for x minus 2, everything to the right of 2 is positive and then negative. Here, everything to the right is positive. Everything to the left of negative 2 is negative. Now for the quotient, we will just count the number of negatives. Since we have three negatives here, that would mean that the sign of this expression is negative. I have two negatives, so this is positive. One negative, so that's negative, And everything here is positive. Now going back to our inequality, we want to get the values for which it is less than 0. Hence, we get this. We want it to be negative. What is this interval here? This is to the left of negative 2. So this is x is less than negative 2. This is x is between the 0 here is 1, 2. So x is between 1 and 2. Note that I do not have equalities here because this is strictly less than 0. And then this one will be joined by or. In interval notation, what is this? x less than negative 2 is negative infinity negative 2. x is between 1 and 2 is 1, 2. Or means union. This will be your solution set. It is very important for you to remember that whenever you have rational inequalities, you cannot multiply both sides by the LCD. You cannot do this. Why is it wrong to do this? It's because you do not know the value of x minus 2 times x plus 2. Because remember that for your inequality sign, it will flip if the quantity that you are multiplying is negative. All right, but since it includes a variable, you will have no way of determining whether it's positive or negative. You can only multiply both sides of an inequality if it's a constant. So if it's like this, I, will, I can multiply both sides by 4 because 4 is a constant. Here is another example, 5 minus 2x all over x minus 4 greater than or equal to 0. For the first step, one side is already equal to 0, so... That's already done. Second step, the numerator and the denominator must be factored, and it's done already. We can no longer factor this. So we will now proceed with creating our table of signs. 
Here are my number lines for each factor, 5 minus 2x, x minus 4, and for the quotient. Before we proceed in creating the table of signs, we have to get the zeros first. 5 minus 2x will be equal to 0 when x is equal to 5 halves. For x minus 4, it will be equal to 0 when x is equal to 4. Let us now locate these values. 5 halves is less than 4. So I will put 5 halves here and 4 here. Hence, we now divide our number line at these points. Notice here in class that this is the first time we're in we encountered something where the coefficient of x is negative. The coefficient of x here is negative 2. Before, whenever we're filling up our table of signs, I told you that everything to the right is positive and everything to the left is negative. However, in this case, it will not happen. What will happen is the opposite. Everything to the right, the 5 halves, will be negative and everything to the left is going to be positive. Why is that? Again, it's because the coefficient of x is negative. So remember that the sign on the right will depend on the sign of the coefficient of x. Just to show you that it is really the case, let's get a test value for this. A number between 5 halves and 4 would be 3. What is the value of 5 minus 2 times 3? 5 minus 6, that's negative 1. So indeed, it is really negative. Whereas if I get a number to the left of 5 halves, let's say 0, 5 minus 2 times 0 is equal to 5. Let's continue filling up our table of values. For x minus 4, everything to the right of 4 is positive. The coefficient of x is positive. Everything to the left is negative. And therefore, the quotient 5 minus 2x all over x minus 4 is positive times negative. That's negative on this interval. Two negatives will be positive and then one negative, so that's negative. However, what do we want? We want it to be greater than or equal to zero, so we get this one, positive. What is this? X is between 5 halves and 4. Now let us see which ones can we include. Can we include 5 halves? Yes, 5 halves is a 0 of 5 minus 2x, and we're allowed to have 0, correct? So we can include this. Can we include 4? 4 is in the denominator, so therefore we cannot have x to be equal to 4. Otherwise, our quotient will be undefined. So therefore, this is now your solution. In interval notation, the solution set is... 5 halves 4 with 5 halves included and 4 is open. Here is another example. We have 4x plus 5 all over x plus 2 greater than or equal to 3. What is the first step? The first step is to set one side to 0. Once we have that one side is already equal to 0, we have to turn the non zero side into a single rational expression so that we can factor the numerator and denominator. This is x plus 2. The LCD of x plus 2 and 1 is x plus 2. This is 4x plus 5 minus x plus 2 divided by 1 is x plus 2 times 3. So that's 3 times x plus 2. Let us simplify this. We have 4x plus 5 minus 3x minus 6. And therefore, this is x minus 1 all over x plus 2 greater than or equal to 0. Our numerator and denominator can no longer be factored, so therefore, we will now proceed with creating our table of signs. 
Here are my number lines for my factors. When will this be equal to 0? x minus 1 is 0 at x equals 1. x plus 2 is 0 when x is negative 2. And again, we will divide the number lines at these points. Let us now fill this up. x minus 1 is positive to the right of 1. The coefficient of x is positive. x plus 2, everything to the right is positive. Everything to the left is negative. And therefore, the quotient is negative times negative. That's positive. I have one negative here, so that's negative, and two positive, so that's positive. What do we want? We want it to be greater than or equal to zero. So therefore, we get positive. What is this interval? This is x less than negative 2. We will deal with the qualities later on. And for this one, this is to the right of 1. So that's x greater than 1. Can we include negative 2? No, because it is a 0 of your denominator. Can we include 1? 1 is a 0 of your numerator, x minus 1. And we are allowed to have 0. So therefore, this is greater than or equal to 1. And we always use or. In interval notation, this is negative infinity to negative 2, or means union, and this is 1 to infinity. Here is another example. Again, the first step is to set one side to 0. And then we now combine into a single rational expression. This is 2 minus 3x plus 4 times 2 plus 3x. How do we get these values? It's just divide, then multiply. Divide and then multiply. Let us now simplify this. We get 2 minus 3x plus 8 plus 12x all over. 2 plus 3x. Let us simplify the numerator. That is 9x plus 10 all over 2 plus 3x less than or equal to 0. Our inequality is now equivalent to this one. The numerator and the denominator can no longer be factored, so we will now proceed with our table of signs. But before we do that, let us first get the zeros of your numerator and denominator. For 9x plus 10, when will this be equal to 0? This will be 0 when x is equal to negative 10 over 9. For the denominator, 2 plus 3x is going to be 0 when x is equal to negative 2 thirds. Here are my number lines for my factors and let us locate the zeros. Negative 10 over 9 is the zero of 9x plus 10. Negative 10 over 9 is less than negative 2 thirds. So therefore I will put it here on the left. Negative 10 over 9 and for 2 plus 3x, negative 2 thirds is on the right. And we will divide our number line at these points. For 9x plus 10, the coefficient of x is positive, so everything to the right is positive, everything to the left is negative. Similarly, everything to the right of negative 2 thirds is positive, everything is negative on the left. Therefore, we have 2 negatives is positive, this is negative, and positive. What is it that we want? We want it to be less than 0 or negative. What is this interval? This means that x is between negative 10 over 9 and negative 2 thirds. Can we include negative 10 over 9? Negative 10 over 9 is the 0 of 9x plus 10. 
This is for the numerator and we are allowed to have 0. So we can include that. Can we include negative 2 thirds? No, because that's a 0 of your denominator. That is now your solution set in interval notation. This is negative 10 over 9 closed and negative 2 thirds open. For our next example, we have 3 over x minus 3 less than or equal to x plus 2. One side must be equal to 0. Remember, we cannot multiply both sides of your inequality by x minus 3 times x plus 2 because it includes a variable. What can we do? We just turn this into a single rational expression x minus 3 times x plus 2 divided by x minus 3 is x plus 2 times 3 minus this divided by this is x minus 3 times 2. Let us simplify this. We have 3x plus 6 minus 2x plus 6 all over x minus 3 x plus 2, less than or equal to 0. And therefore, this is just x plus 12 all over x minus 3 times x plus 2. And we want it to be less than or equal to 0. These are already factored, so therefore, we will now proceed with creating our table of signs. Here are my number lines for my factors and I indicated the zeros here. This is 0 at negative 12, this is 0 at 3, and this is 0 at x equals negative 2. The smallest of this is negative 12. Next is negative 2, so this one. And lastly, 3. Let us now fill up our table of signs. Notice that the coefficients of your x here are all positive, so therefore everything to the right of their zeros will be positive. This is positive, negative, negative. Here it's positive and then negative. For the quotient, three negatives would be negative, two negatives would be positive. 1 negative, so this is negative, and no negatives, so this is positive. What is it that we want? We want it to be less than 0, so we want the negative values. What is this interval? This is the interval x is less than negative 12, because this is to the left of negative 12. This is between negative 2 and 3 x is between negative 2 and 3 and 4. Let us see if we can include these values. Can x be equal to negative 12? Yes, because that is a 0 of your numerator and we are allowed to have a 0. However, for negative 2 and 3, those are zeros of your denominator and we are not allowed to have a 0 in your denominator because it will make the rational expression undefined. Therefore, this is our solution set in interval notation. This is negative infinity to negative 12 or means union and open interval negative 2, 3. For our last example, we have this. Let's turn one side to 0 first. Minus our entire x plus 2. So I will put a parenthesis there. Turn this into a single fraction. Simplifying the numerator, we get x plus 1 times x plus 2 is x squared plus 3x plus 2. Let's get rid of the parenthesis by distributing the minus sign.
Let us simplify this. x squared minus x squared is 0. 3x minus 3x is 0. We're left with 1 minus 2. So that's negative 1 all over x plus 1 less than 0. Here is our inequality in its simplest form. Take note that negative 1 is a constant here. What I will do is I will multiply both sides by negative 1. I can do this because I am multiplying both sides by a constant. And because I know that negative 1 is negative, the inequality sign gets flipped. This is still 0. So therefore, the inequality will just depend on the value of x plus 1. So your table of signs will just consist of one number line, x plus 1. And this is 0 at negative 1. This is positive and negative. This will also be the sine of 1 over x plus 1, correct? So therefore, since what we want is 1 over x plus 1 greater than 0, we get positive and it will be positive when x is to the right of negative 1, greater than negative 1. Again, I did not include negative 1 because it will make your denominator 0. In interval notation, this is negative 1 to infinity.